Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 574. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because we are going to talk about those things that can sometimes, well, get in your way, but most importantly, apply to each and every one of us every day. It's been said that no matter where you go, there you are, and how you do anything is how you do everything. I'm bringing this up for a reason. Because today's guest would say that there is a way. In fact, there are eight principles that can bring out the winner in you. But most importantly, that winner has always been there, but maybe hasn't had the opportunity to come out and shine. I'm excited because you're going to learn something today that you'll be able to apply to your business regardless of what your business is or where you are. And remember... I've said it before and I say it again, you and I, we will never out-earn our personal growth. I have with me today none other than Sean Harper. He's a former American football offensive tackle in the National Football League. Here's what that means and why it's important. You may not care about the sport, but you should care about the discipline. But I, I promise you that there are lessons that it takes to play at that level that transfer 100% to what you and I do today because... Well, you may not be playing for the Super Bowl, but I promise you, you, your family, and the friends that you have are hoping that you do win some sort of ring in the arena of business. We're going to talk about those principles, and we're actually going to help you apply them as well. So here's what your job is today. Let's make sure that we're paying attention. Make sure that the kids are put to bed or the dog, if you're walking them, great. At the end of the day, make sure you have something to take notes with, because ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, this is going to be one of those that you're going to play over and over again. So do me a favor. Let's get ready to welcome, listen, and learn from Sean Hopper. Sean, how are you doing? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. How are you? So far, so good. You know, I'm, I always get excited when I get to talk to former professional uh players of any particular sport, but specifically football and basketball. So I'm definitely excited to do that. But before I get too far down that road, what I would love to do is I got to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody else the first time that they're here. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, like Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, etc. You get the idea. Because I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. For example, as an entrepreneur, I can envision myself flying around town, using our products and services, and saving customers one sale at a time. But also, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. For example, Spider-Man. You think there was a time where he's just a kid going to school, doing his thing, then one day he gets bit by a spider, discovers, hey, I have a superhuman ability, and now he's presented with a choice. Do I use it for good or for evil? So my question for you is as follows. Before the NFL, before the TV show made, before your book, The Winning Edge, Eight Principles That Will Bring Out the Winner in You, before everything that we know you for today, what we want to know is, who is Sean Harper? <laughs> well, Sean Harper is interesting because it's really hard for me to define who I was looking from today's perspective. Hmm. And so I'm going to do the best that I can because I think um, in our industry as being entrepreneurs and motivational speakers, which I happen to be both, 
is that we tend to uh, uh, gloss over the story in the mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. The process, uh, 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 for the lack of a better word, produces the product. And we get so enamored with the product but not the process. And so if I could for a couple seconds walk you through the process that uh, that resulted into the product. That would be and great. So, uh, yeah, I was played with challenges and setbacks and adversities. Um, repeating the first grade, documented with four to five learning disabilities by the time I was in the fifth grade, kicked out of a couple schools because of disciplinary issues, um, left high school with a 1.62 accumulative GPA, now on my ACT, graduating last in my class, obviously. So Sean Harper back then uh, was, was labeled with um, despair, uh, abuse, failure, rejection. Uh, in fact, I was voted most likely to fail. Okay, and so I'm at the bottom of the bottom of the barrel. And what's interesting is that I believe I was at the bottom of the bottom of the barrel. Uh, I barely started in high school football. I wasn't even the uh, honorable mention all conference, you know. Um, and, and so went off to a junior college, and the first year of that junior college, I sat the bench the entire season, not one play. Hmm. And I picking up the phone, calling my mom and saying, Mom, I quit. Mom, I want to come home. And thank goodness that mom uh, uh, put me back in the pressure cooker. And that's mm -hmm. very important pressure because, you know, adversity can break you, but it can make you a record breaker. That is perspective. And um, that Sean Harper was a failure, uh, was a loser. Uh, I was everyone's opinion. That became my reality. And what happened? in a different light. And that is so important. That right there is everything. Um, I begin to see myself as a winner. Mm -hmm. And once once I begin to see myself as a person that's a winner, then my actions and my thoughts begin to change as well. I begin to overperform, outperform. I went from not even starting from junior college to the Junior College Hall of Fame, uh, Indiana University, Blocked for two Eisman candidates, draft day in the NFL, third pick in the fourth round, played seven years professional football. But it came back to who are you? Okay, are you a victim or are you a victor? Big difference. You see, winners always look what they're going to, not what they're going through. So the evolution stepped up. Aaron Sean Harper is a winner, and I will manifest that way wherever I go, God willing. You know, and that that's what I I love about the the process, if you will, is it's it's not so much I mean, don't get me wrong, the rewards, the trophy, the, the celebration, that's fun. But changing that mindset from victim to victor, as you said, it's becoming that person and that, that transformation process. Everyone wants it, but yet the the process of actually going through it, especially when your conscious is of what you're going through is is can be a challenge so I, here's where i i'm curious like every other superhero every other entrepreneur there's always this moment in the journey at which you actually begin to realize oh i have something special here i can do something now and i'm going to ask this for you in, in, in a couple of different ways because the, there was this moment that clicked that where you go, okay, I, I believe this. And yeah, yeah, I can, I can play football. I've got something here that I can actually do. I want to understand like, what was the, was the thing that, that flipped that switch. And then secondly, you also did something that is unique. And after exiting uh, professional sports, you had to flip that switch again in a completely different way. And I, I would love to hear about that. Wow. So I'm, I'm uh, in the dorm room uh, at junior college. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, I decided to go back to junior college early um, over uh, summer break. I went back in April and I stayed in the dorm room all by myself, right? And I, and I began to practice every single day, uh, twice a day, by myself, actually. Mm -hmm. And... and um, Three or four guys watching TV, and it's called a Freudian slip. Man, I jumped up. I said, man, I always wanted to play Division One in NFL football. 
and one by one they begin to confirm you'll never make it you're not strong enough you're not fast enough you're not quick enough um let me stop right there mm. never allow people to create your world because they'll always create it too small okay um and and so it was at that moment when I just slowly walked out to the practice field and I said to myself, all I have is a dream. And that, that is so important because every single person listening, you have a dream. Your dream is like a seed. You can often count the number of seeds in an orange, but you can never count the number of oranges in the seed. There's nothing more powerful than outside of, of faith and love. The dream is right there. Hope. And I'm like, I have this crazy dream. And and so I made a decision. I mean, and man, you know what? It, wow, you got this decision. I made a decision to focus on the dream versus focusing on people's expectations and opinions and realities that they've created for me. And that includes media. And so I begin to focus on my dream. And when you begin to focus on your dream, you move out of something, you move out of creation. And you move into something much, much more powerful, and that's manifestation. And I'm focusing on the dream, and I'm watching things begin to shift and change. And I begin to push through resistance, which is what you have to have for your dream. And um, the rest is history. But once you change your focus, you change your life. Now, there were many people, though, who, and again... Uh, being able to maintain and sustain and persevere and, and to get to the NFL is <laughs> beyond worthy achievement. And it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of focus, as you're, as you're mentioning. What I've also heard, and many people have heard, of the story of the, you know, used to be pro athlete who no longer is managing to make things work right, that also had to be a, 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 a shift, a challenge, a, a different way of attacking life. Uh, but I'm curious to hear not so much what's different, but what's also the same. Can you, can you rephrase that? I think I know exactly where you're going, but I want to hit a bullseye on that. So here's what I'm coming down to saying. When we switch, you know, the arena in which we are used to winning our gold medals in, we have to sometimes yes. reframe who we are, how we see ourselves, and what it means to have even a, fur, a, a base hit, a small victory, in any way, shape, or form. So what I'm curious to hear is what that transition was like going from playing the game of football to playing the game of business. Okay. And that's... So here is, here is the hidden secret to this. All right? In fact, uh, this is not a plug because my second book is not finished, but it's about goals. Mm. Okay, so check it out. Right? This, is, this is it right here. Okay, so when I'm playing football and I have a goal to make it to the NFL, I have a team around me. I have my teammates. I have a coach who's pushing me. There's cheerleaders on the sideline. I mean, there's a system for growth and development. But what happens is that when so many athletes and entertainers, actors and actresses, once they leave that system and then they try to do things for the team, then the result is usually failure. So you reference superheroes just now, which is like huge. I love superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. But every superhero... Rare, rarely, rarely do you see superheroes engaging by themselves. They always have a team. I, in fact, I don't think I've ever seen a superhero series where he's just him or her by themselves. Even Batman had Robin, or 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 uh, Iron Man had a daggone computer that he spoke to. <laughs> and, 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 right. You know, and so we have like the super friends, right? And it's, but, but, but they engage as a team. So when athletes leave the game, right? 80% of athletes are, are, are football players are broke two years after they leave the game or divorce. Now think about that because they don't have a team. They don't have coaches. They don't have mentors. They don't have support. They don't have cheerleaders in their new area of expertise. And so when you move as an athlete into a new area, when you move as um, even as an actual entrepreneur, 
you have to build your team. You have to, you know, find that coach. You have to find the mentor. You have to find your support system. The results are dismal. Let me explain to you about being an entrepreneur, okay? A business person, it's like swimming in a swimming pool, right? Because you know the rules, you got the parameters, you work for a company, you get the political structures, blah, 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 you know, you got your systems every day. An entrepreneur is like swimming in the ocean. It's water, but you're in the ocean. And so there's a whole new set of skill sets and teammates and things that you have to develop in order to win in the ocean versus a swimming pool. That's that's what that's that's what we have to do to make that transition, or at least that's what I did. Is that I developed and found the team, and so, I was still perfecting and creating. Well, and, and and that's the thing that I want to hit on is how did you manage to to see that need and and make that happen when it, it seems to me because here, here's the thing because you've been in the environment where it was the team it would seem like it would be a more natural transition in a lot of ways like oh okay cool now i've got to go build the team around me because it's no longer here but yet not that's clearly not common so uh, I'm curious, to, was there a person? Was it a, a, you just read the right book? You woke up one day, inspiration said, hey, you're going to need a team once you exit this this game, so you better start building it now. Like, what happened? So I would love to say that, you know, when I left the league, soon I, soon I was able to, I had a team. And, no, no, it took years to, to, to come to that realization. It took years, and I mean years to come to that realization. That you know what you are one piece to a bigger puzzle. You need a team because I was always that lone wolf. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm gonna do it by myself. I'm gonna build it. And you know what? We're not designed to build things or to move on our own. We need teams. All success or more major wins in life comes as the result. Well, most of them come as the result of a person having a team. Period. Plain and simple. It took me years to realize that. And that's the kind of the point that I wanted to hit is that there's a number of people who are listening right now at various stages of their journey going, how come I haven't, quote unquote, made it yet? And it just could be that you haven't gotten the entire team together. Now, there's something that I really must talk about because uh, your first book, The Winning Edge, uh, eight principles that will bring out the winner in you. Uh, I, I've got to understand something very, very clear. <laughs> what do you see as the difference? Because this is something my mom, this is something I, I think about all the time. Because my mom always said to me, like if we were playing spades or whatever we were doing, you know, if I lost track of the game and that she was there with me, she would say, boy, play to win. Period. That's right. Play to win. Now, when... She says that I have an understanding of what she means. I'm curious to know what you mean. Okay, so let me let me let me unpack this as quick as possible. Okay. Oh, take huge... your time. We got time because I want to hear this. This is the everything right here, my friend. <laughs> so, so we are we are created to win. Okay. And. In fact, the fact that we're having a conversation in that is the key. To, that's the crux of everything. Because your perspective is everything. Okay, you attack this life as a as an actual winner. And so now let me drive the fact home that you're creating a winner. See, let's say it's, now it's football season. Soon it'll be basketball season. Then it'll be baseball season. Mm-hmm. Right? Now you're in the great state of California. Mm-hmm. I, 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 right? Or you're out west somewhere. Okay. So let's just say that. Let's just take. Um, let's take the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. San Francisco 49ers. Let's say they lost every game for the next five years. The stadium is empty. If they won every game for the next five years, the stadium is full. Why? Because we're winners and we are attracted to winning. Now, we talk about racism all the time and, you know, this racism and this and that and that was prejudice. You know what? I never experienced racism on the football field. 
and I had teammates next to me, and I know that they were probably racist. But you know what? Racism don't matter on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Why? Because we're trying to win. The win is greater than the every. The win is the essence of who you are. When we play video games, we're not trying to be successful. We're trying to win. Gaming industry, we're trying to win. The, the mere fact that each and every one of you are listening, you're one of two or three million sperm cells that fertilize the egg, which means that you won. So now you're carrying <laughs> that winner. Around the third or fourth grade, you're introduced to a different concept called success. And success teaches you production, but it doesn't teach you reproduction. Winning teaches re reproduction. So a, a successful business person is a hard worker, and he was productive or she was productive, but a winner scales his or her business. And so reproduction versus production is is just totally different. We were made to reproduce. So when you get towards the end of your life or as you're moving towards life, you ask yourself your question, what have I produced? Have I mentored? Have I encouraged? Um, um, is my income, am I focused on my 401k or do I have reproductive income, residual income? When I'm old and gray, do I have a legacy? That's when you win. So our world, our society teaches us production. So when we're in our 60s, they're trying to downsize us. They're trying to, they're trying to retire us out the door because our production level drops. But that's not how you were created. And so a lot of people get dismayed, they get depressed, they get angry because they know they're successful, but deep inside they know they're not winning. And when you're not winning, ooh, I tell you what, it's like putting a greyhound, you know, it's like putting a um, a uh, Labrador in an apartment building. <laughs> he has okay, everything, everything that it needs. He has the dog, he has the bathroom, whatever. But it's like deep inside, he or she knows, man, I need to be running. That's when you win. Production versus reproduction. So when it comes down to it, I mean, Everyone then, by by these definitions, has that seed of of greatness inside. There's there's that winner that's there. What do you think it takes for a person to bring it out? All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, and I'm glad that you are enjoying what you are hearing thus far. But here's one of the things that's really important. One of the most important things that you can do as get started. One of the things that I've said before, and I say again, once you get started, stay started. But more importantly, there can be lots of roadblocks to getting started. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove one of those roadblocks for you and make it a little bit easier. Because the thing that I don't want to stop you is thinking, do I need a local number? How about a long distance number? Or should it be 800? How on earth am I going to make that happen so that people can contact me as I'm out there building my business, making my cash flow grow, but most importantly, understanding that it doesn't have to be difficult. Many of you may know, but if you don't, there's a company out there by the name of Grasshopper. And what I want you to do is I want you to go over to trygrasshopper.com forward slash cash flow diary. Grasshopper is the entrepreneur's phone system. It works like a traditional phone system, but requires no hardware to purchase, no software to install. It's just a number that flat works. So if you are out there building that distributed workforce across many different locations, it's a way for you to still go out there and make your number be unified simple easy to use something we've been using for quite some time so again go over to trygrasshopper.com forward slash cash flow diary now let's get back to the rest of the story first and foremost you have to recognize it and realize it uh winning has been hijacked by success you know i mean think about it. i mean there are a lot of very, according to the world standard, successful, depressed people. And then, so was I created to be depressed? You know, the, the number one medication in the world is antidepressants, or at least in the United States. That's the number one prescribed medication. So everyone's successful and depressed. Why? Because they're locked up in an apartment when they should be running full speed. But, but so, okay, but hold on, hold on. Here, here, here's, here's what I'm saying. When someone is trying to change, though, when you're in that process of change, you, you have that second, that glimmer. There's a glimmer of hope. In fact, there's probably some people listening right now who are catching that glimmer and being reminded of the greatness that's inside of them. And yet 
when the, what's going to happen is that as they stop listening or as they go about the rest of their day, there's so much in their current reality that they go look at that re that reflects something other than that image that they were holding during the moment that they were dreaming and it becomes a challenge and, and it's that process of hey this is who i am but yet when i look around myself i don't see that evidence yet i want to understand how do they make that change easy well i won't say easy but the process is or i could just share what i did or yeah. or the, the things that that i've done is that i get moving it's like, you know, huh. I'm called to serve, well, then I start serving. I've been called to give, well, then I start giving. I've been called to teach, I, then I'll start teaching. You know, there's so many there's so many opportunities to express you. There's so many opportunities to express the wind that's in you. Have we had this conversation in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, 70s? I've been like, well, you got, but that one of the internet's out there, social media's out there, there's so mm -hmm. much out there right now. There's so, there's so many access to groups and to connect with other people to express your win. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> let's, let's, just say, let's just say that my win is to mentor other small businesses. Man, I, 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 you know, and business well, okay, and start making phone calls. Yeah. I have LinkedIn. I have so, I have so much <laughs> to express my win in. Yeah. No, I, I feel I feel the exact same way. It's like the the barrier to entry is uh, non-existent, um, or actually the barrier to entry is will. Uh, you know, will you do it? <laughs> if you will, then great. You you can make it happen. So having the experience now um, in professional sports as well as in business, I'm curious to know what lessons in sports uh, have you had to translate to your team uh, in your business and, and how did that go? I mean, because I, I can see a situation in which at least in my mind's eye, I can go, okay, um, you know, as you transition, you run into employees or individuals who might not have ever played sports and suddenly now they're like, they're all the same. And you know, that can see them resisting some of the concepts and things that it takes to win in business simply because, you know, they, uh, their own bias towards a game or sports in general. You know what? You 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 hit the nail right on the head. Uh, when I uh, finished playing and I you know, moved into business, it was so tough because I'm used to going 100 miles an hour. I'm so focused. Like, where's the end zone? That's where I'm going. And then I'm like, you know, people having coffee breaks every 15 minutes and, and uh, <laughs> their dad work capacity. They want a mental day. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> hurts. I got to go home early. Like, oh, you know yeah. what? Yeah. That is so true. But you know what? One of the things I've learned how to do, really honestly, um, is, and, and I've learned this from sports. One of the things I've learned how to do is to talk to people differently. And I don't have time to talk about different temperaments and, you know, whatever. But the way you motivate one person is not the way you motivate another individual. The way you encourage one person is not the way you encourage another individual. You have individuals all around you. They have issues. They have challenges. They have pain points. They have things that actually motivate them, you have to find that as a leader, you know, because it all comes down to people. You know, people uh, aligned with vision uh, increases production, and production always, good production always increases profit, okay? And so I've learned, like example, I don't know people mm -hmm. who, who actually play football or watch football, but when you watch football, and you see a quarterback throw an interception, rarely, and I mean rarely, have you ever seen that quarterback yelled at by the coach. He doesn't. And certain players, they never get yelled at. Other players, man, you got to get them. Man, you got to get in their face every other day and keep them fired up. They feed off that. So you have to become an expert in understanding people and motivating people and encouraging people. And that has helped me so much. There's a book I, I recommend. It's not my book, but um, 
my mentor shared it with me years ago. It's it's how to win friends and influence people mm-hmm. because that. Yeah, that, that is definitely one of the foundational books necessary for, I would say, for anyone in business, especially if you're the entrepreneur or CEO or leading individuals in any way, shape or form. So um, as we continue here, I, I'm curious to to understand when you step back and, and look at where you are today, is this something you could have envisioned from the beginning? Like, does it even uh, look like you thought it would at all in any way, shape, or form? No. I had no idea because, you know, I saw, uh, I saw people's, people's opinion. Mm. There's a, there, there is, there is a difference between image life and identity life. And, but uh, oftentimes our world voids us of our identity so we can develop an image. Great marketing scheme, right? And the world begins to define who you are. Hey, if you don't go to college and get a degree, and, and if you don't live in this subdivision, and if you don't drive this car, and it, you know, image based, that's who you are. Well, then you're not much of life, and then you buy into that lie versus living from identity as the winner that you are. So most of my life, even at times I still struggle with that, is that, you know, my image was jacked up. I like that because uh, most of us, we're not thinking about it all the time. We're rare. In fact, we're not taught to think about our identity, define it for ourselves and then compare it to what's out there. So having that as an option is a unique skill. Where did that come from? Um, and I'll bring it all the way back to I, I begin to see myself as a winner. Yeah, but but the concept in and of itself has to have, get reinforced. Anytime we get a new idea, the idea of, oh, I need to see myself as a winner. My issue is identity. Now I've got to build skill sets about deciding who that is. That you you just one day said you know what I'm a winner and that and it just goes from there. No, it, it's 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 actually it's actually a trained practice. Ah, got it. it you, the, I see the end zone. I see touchdowns. I know what winning is. Everyone within the sound of my voice, you know what winning is. If you've seen any sports, if you've seen any sports with kids, whatever, you won. You know, okay, so. So there is no misconception about that. How is it applied to your life? It's applied to your life a little bit at a time, day at a time, month at a time. But if you can walk in that, then your perspective changes about who you are and what you manifest. You see, all actions stem from thoughts. All thoughts come from your belief systems. And that's where most people stop. But your belief system is nestled in your self-concept. Who are you? A guy wrote a book a long, long time ago named Maxwell Maltz. He wrote a book called Psycho-Cybernetics, and he talks about your self-concept. Or at least that's my self-concept. And you will always manifest your self-concept. So yeah, day at a time, inch at a time, and guess what? I'm not all there yet. I still focus on that. I still have my struggles, especially when I have a setback. You know, I can't let that define me. When I have, you know... A missed opportunity, it tries to define me. I can't let that. I don't watch much media anymore because it's always trying to tell me who I am and who I'm not. You know, and so I kind of shut my life, you know, like, you, you know, and then, in fact, I'm looking at cutting back off the social media because it's always trying to define me indirectly. Hmm. You know, it, it, it's interesting you said what you just said because I've always viewed like artists and athletes, um, uh, musicians, uh, as having a very unique advantage in business. And, and their advantage is, in order to be an artist, a musician, or an athlete, the one thing that you have practiced at, a, a great skill at, is, is, is failing. I mean, you dropped the ball and had to pick it up and get back in there and play again. You've lost the game and then you know what you do the next day? You gotta go, you still gotta go back to practice. Uh, you, you've had a lot of practice at failing and that's a skill set I would, 
I typically attributed that athletes would be strong in. Is that not the case? Yes and no. Um, we are strong, yes, but it's why we are strong. We are strong because we have a strong support system. I see. I mean, you have, you know, you know, an actual athlete, and he like stumbles and he falls, you know, enough times. That going, and he's going. I, I, mean, I don't care who you are. Eventually, you know, you might want to kind of hang up the cleats. So, <laughs> think about this: when we were kids, yeah, okay, when we were like four or five years old, and we saw the other kids, and they all had bicycles, and you're like, Mommy, Mommy, I want a bike, you know, or Daddy, I want a bicycle, and they get you a bike, and they put the training wheels on, and they take one wheel off, they take the other wheel off, and what do you do? They push you, and you fall. You hit, bam, you hit the ground, right? You hit the ground. Yeah, hard. And I ran into bushes, because it was right. really bad. Yeah. It was so yeah. bad. <laughs> right. You ran into bushes. Now, in that moment, how many kids in that moment would get up and say, man, I got to get this? No. Mom is in the back or whoever. Come on, you can do it again. Let's go. Push mm -hmm. a little further. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, yeah. And so that's how you learn how to ride a bike. You fail. You hurt your knee. You got up. And someone pushed you and someone encouraged you. Hmm. That, like, like. Like, think about this for a second. You know, athletes, we have groupies. Like, we have groupies around us, you know? Uh -huh. And, like, CEOs, they have schmoozers. Now, think about this for a second. You have a CEO of a major company, and that one employee is schmoozing and smooth. Now, you, do you not think that the boss sees what's going on? <laughs> if she needs that. He or she needs that encouragement. He or she needs to be motivated. He or she needs to, you know what, you're going to do fine. We need that as leaders. We need that. That's a part of the team. Athletes, we know that person could be a groupie, but, man, we, we really appreciate the encouragement that we get from, you know, from that individual. Yeah. I, you know, I, I never thought about that. I mean, and... and I guess it just exposes my level of thinking, but I now think I understand. I like even the purpose of the cheerleader sitting on the sideline. That 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 that's part. Of, that is a part of it. I mean, and I just never considered it until you're saying this right now. Oh man, listen, every every entrepreneur within the sound of my voice, listen to me, God, please listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> to have that person in your life that believes in you hmm. is so vital because this world will will chew you up, spit you out. Will chew you up and spit you out. Your failures, your setbacks, your bad decisions, man. To have that person like, you know what, I believe in you is 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 vital. It's vital. Yeah. So for those that have listened this far, want to find out more about what you've got going on and, and, and just want to know more about Sean Hopper and what you're up to, what's going to be the best way for them to catch up with you? Well, you can go to my website at seanharper.org, uh, S-H-A-W-N-H-A-R-P-E-R.org. You can also go to Sean Harper Speaking. Look, I need y'all to help me out, okay? Because I'm dad on Instagram, algorithms be chewing up my numbers. So, <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, man. And so you go to Sean Harper, S H A W N H A R P E R, Sean Harper speaking. Men like me become my friend. I don't care. I just whatever you got to do, just join up. Um, I have an actual course coming out. It's like 24 weeks right now of just once a week. I'm just going to give like a five, six minute video, give a challenge, give homework. That's, that's on the way out. As I mentioned, my second book is on the way out. And I have a. Uh, yeah, but you stay on the gram and on my website. I'm I'm gonna just dump content because um, I've I've learned one thing. You know, mm -hmm. the principle, the law of God is that it doesn't come to you if it can't get through you. And I'm only here for uh, a vapor, and I believe I've been imparted with a lot of information that can lead to transformation. Love it. 
So uh, as we wind down, I've got a final question for you because I'm curious to hear your answer. Let's, uh, you know, I always like to say it this way. You know, there's individuals who have listened this entire time. They were in one mental, emotional, physical state when they started listening. They've listened this far, and now they're in a second one. And many of those individuals who made it this far are at that state. They're, they are like, you know what? Sean's right. I can do this. I am a winner. I am ready. They're drawing that proverbial line in the sand. They're at what I like to call the precipice of decision. And here's the challenge. You and I know, you, you really know, that... When we as humans, we get to this precipice, what often happens is we have a companion. That companion comes in the form of a voice, and it's a voice that reminds us why it didn't work last time. You're going to do what? Don't you know? I know who you really are. And for some people, they're related to that voice. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that this time it's going to be different. They're going to follow through. They're going to do exactly what you suggest, and they're going to do it in the next 24 to 48 hours. Mm-hmm. What should they do? What should they do? So yep. are you asking me that they hear of an opportunity or they're ready to move forward? Yep. And and they're like, well, I tell you what, let me give you three words, okay, okay. Um, that, that haunts me, okay, to be really honest, because I do have regrets, okay? okay. Uh, three words is wish it could have should have. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you have to make a decision and you have to burn your boat. You gotta, you have, you cannot live life comfortable. Because if you're not careful, your comfort zone will become your casket. Okay? Wish you could have shipped. Those words haunt me. And I gotta move with urgency. And I gotta play the win. And so, yes, you will get knocked down, you will fall down, you will fail. Number one, Failure is your friend. Our educational system taught us to fear failure, okay? Failure is your friend. Failure in life is like life gives the test and teaches the lesson. Learn from the failure and get back on the bike. The average millionaire has filed for bankruptcy three times. Our president has filed for bankruptcy four times. Oh, I, um, yeah. So <laughs> I love where you're coming from, sir. I really, really do. And and what's great is that it's it's tangible. It's useful. It, it's and I, I just appreciate who you are, what you are being for so many small businesses, uh, the game that you're playing, and how you're playing it for sure as well and i just want to be the first to thank you for taking the time to share your your knowledge your wisdom and your insight here with us today at the cash for there hey no problem i really enjoyed uh your questions very thought provoking you guys um are blessed your tribe is blessed because you know how to pull the the really tough questions i'm sorry you are like the Barbara Walters of podcasters right now. Because <laughs> you're pulling through. You're like, hi, no, tell me about your past now. <laughs> Which is awesome. This is awesome. It's awesome. Because there is an absence of truth. And you are a seeker of truth. I love that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? Well, that means get over to SeanHarper.org. That means take some action. That means do something. That means today you are a winner. I have declared it. You can declare it. It is completely up to you, and I give you permission to introduce yourself to the new version of you who is a winner right now. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.